Hey friend, Brandon here. So there have been a ton of Google Pixel 4 leaks lately, and there's a good chance that you may have missed some of them or even missed some of the nuances of them because it seems like many people have missed a couple of things right in front of us. I figured it was time for a Pixel 4 update video going through all the leaks since my last leaks video, which you can check out up here or the link in the description. There's also an opportunity to ask my source for more details, which you can be a part of. And here's one of the pictures. Let's talk about because this is Tech Today. This video is sponsored in part by Honey, a free browser plugin to get the best deal while shopping online. You can even earn rewards. It's like getting free money. Find out more by clicking the link in the description. Make sure to share, subscribe, hit that bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. There is more Pixel 4 content coming and potentially more exclusive leaks for you. Okay, we'll go over all the new leaks in regards to design, colors, specs, software, price, what I think people are missing, and what's left of the exclusive leaks that were given to me. Let's start with the design. Two videos leaked at the start of September, giving us a really good look at the Pixel 4 from all angles. We can see that there's a top bezel which hosts a bunch of technology which I went over in a previous video. I'm totally down with this because it contains technology that makes my life better, like face unlock. It's practicality over aesthetics only, which seems to be the unfortunate trend lately. Now here are two exclusive photos. When we look at the display, it is mostly flat, but the edges are not completely flat. There does seem to be a bit of a bevel to the edges, which reminds me of the Pixel 2 XL a bit, but it's uh, a bit more subtle. I know this was a pain point for those who wanted temper glass screen protectors for the Pixel 2 XL, but for the Pixel 4 it seems like a nice subtle roll off. From what I can tell from the photos alone, it doesn't really look like it'll get in the way of tempered glass screen protectors. Of course, we'll have to find out once we get it into our hands. Either way, I'm glad that we have this kind of design and we don't have to worry about accidental touches, which is strangely going to be a bigger issue as we move towards waterfall displays and other crazy designs. Unfortunately, we lose the rear facing fingerprint sensor, which I really love, especially for the swipe down gestures, but there may be an option to swipe down from the home screen like on Samsung devices. I really like this on my Note 10 Plus. We can also see that we lose the dual front facing speakers. Instead, we have a top earpiece speaker and a bottom firing speaker, which stinks because I constantly cover up the bottom firing speaker on accident. And I really don't want to make a cup for the speaker to make the audio shoot towards me. Here's another set of exclusive pictures. On the bottom of the phone, we can see the USB-C port and two ports for the microphone and speaker. It's pretty standard now, and it looks a lot like the Pixel 3a, which was designed by the Taiwan team or the HCC team that Google purchased. And they're also conveniently the group that is working on the Pixel 4. Now, I'm sure the speakers will sound good. In fact, the Pixel 3a speakers are way better than both the speakers on the Pixel 3 and the 3XL, but this orientation makes no sense. I actually made a whole video video about why this speaker arrangement is odd and why phone companies are not giving us the best and covering up subpar speaker options with clever marketing. You can check it out up here or in the card in the description. There's still a little bit of bezel on the bottom, which I do prefer, especially with swipe gestures. Having a screen that goes all the way to the bottom is extremely frustrating on my Note 10 Plus with gestures. I also would have wanted a little bit more bezel to have a proper speaker. And then finally for the design, we can see that the Pixel 4 will have the curved corners on it. As for colors, we don't know all the colors, but we have seen the black, white, or panda, as some of us like to call it, and this coral, orange, peachy looking color. I'm not certain what the accent colors are for all of the buttons for these three, but the black has a white button, which we can see better in this exclusive image here, and the white has an orange button. The orange one seems to have either a white or orange button too, It's hard to tell, but it almost looks like all three of them have this black frame, which may save some money on manufacturing costs and hopefully means a lower cost for us. It may be possible that we only see these three colors if they're trying to keep all the colors consistent with each other, but it'd be really cool if they have that teal color that many people were hoping to see with the Pixel 3. I wanna know what color is your favorite? Let us know in the comments and what other colors you hope there will be. Now let's talk about specs. We know that the Pixel 4 will be coming to all four of the major US carriers as confirmed by Max Weinbeck, and for sure on Sprint because of this leak. A recent FCC leak revealed wireless charging, as we would assume already, and then code was found by XDA developers confirming that the 90Hz display has been in testing since February. What's particularly cool is the ability to turn on an indicator within the developer options. It allows you to have a little indicator underneath the clock in the status bar that will indicate whether or not it's running in 60Hz using a red bar or 90Hz with a green bar. Within the code, it also looks like Google will see when you watch a video and then choose the appropriate refresh rate. We also seen a test run by one of the leakers that 
the Pixel 4 will have 6 gigabytes of RAM. Now, I admit that this is not as much as most people would prefer. I even prefer 8 gigabytes of RAM, but there are plenty of phones out there that have 6 gigabytes of RAM in them and run fine. But we all have to admit, it would be nice to have a little bit of feature proofing and legroom just in case. Either way, this is not the flagship specs that most tech enthusiasts prefer, but the Pixel 3a exists and it is fantastic. I love using it despite it not having flagship specs. And why do I strangely have so much more satisfaction when I use the Pixel 3a over a Note 10 Plus? The price definitely helps, and I hope that Google nails the pricing for the Pixel 4 despite the lack of flagship specs. At the end of the day, the average consumer doesn't know about all the specs. They just want something that works well and is blown away when they feel like they're getting way more than they expect for the price. I call that the delight to dollar ratio, which I'll talk more about later in the video when we talk about price. Really, people want a good price and I want a good price. You see, I hate spending more than I have to. If I can find a deal or save money, I'll do it, especially when I'm shopping online. That's why I want to tell you about a free browser extension that automatically finds promo codes and the best price for you online and gives you rewards on your purchases from this video sponsor, Honey. Honey effortlessly helps you get the best deals on over 20,000 sites like Amazon, eBay, Razor, Newegg, Best Buy, Walmart, and more. It's super easy to install with just two clicks. Just go to joinhoney.com slash this is tech to get started. I have personally used Honey for years, and I recently used it to buy the Samsung Galaxy Watch Active 2. It automatically kicked in at the checkout to look for codes. I didn't even have to think about it. In this case, it found $45 to knock off the price for me. And whether Honey finds a code or not, on most sites, I can also earn Honey Gold on top of the normal everyday rewards I get on my credit card. So don't lose out on free money, especially when it works nearly everywhere. Listen, there's literally no reason not to use Honey for everything you buy online. It's free to use and installs in just two clicks. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash this is tech. That's joinhoney.com slash this is tech. I love it when I can partner with a sponsor that is free for you, provides incredible value, and that I personally love to use. So please check out Honey as it helps support the channel. Now let's talk about the software. First, with the camera, Google heavily relies on software to get the amazing photos that it is known for. And there's a ton of really great improvements that seem to be coming. The camera will have an 8x camera, as we saw on this one image here with the max zoom length shown. By the way, why in the world would you take a picture outside the building you work in too? That's a terrible way to leak images. <laughs> these, these guys are are really bad. Anyways, Stephen Hall from 9to5Google reported that his source mentioned a motion mode. This would help with action or motion shots like sports, race cars, and small human beings running after doggies. <laughs> What makes this particularly interesting is the ability to not only capture a fast moving subject without it becoming a massive blur, but adding a background blur, kind of like portrait mode. And I imagine this is a fake software bokeh. Either way, it would be a really cool and good supplement for that telephoto lens with 8x zoom. Steven also heard that Night Sight will be improved even more than before, which will be great since other companies like Huawei have implemented their own versions and are quite impressive. Supposedly, there will be general improvements, speed improvements, and my favorite, to support astrophotography or to take pictures of of the stars. Steven also heard that the Google Assistant will have a new feature that is really practical and amazing that's called Hold My Phone. But apparently, this new feature will allow you to pass a call over to the Assistant when you're on hold and then the Assistant will notify you somehow when there's a human back on the line. We're not really sure how that practically works out. And personally, I've been on hold with Samsung multiple times in the past few weeks over some customer support issues and had to wait over an hour each time and I've missed them picking up a few times, so this would have been helpful. So I like this. Google's doing practical things that make my life easier. And the reality is, is that smartphones are fairly mature across the board right now, so hardware really isn't the game anymore. Software is the new game, and Google is far ahead of the competition. I'm also not sure if Hold My Phone is an add-on of Duplex, the service that allows you to ask the Google Assistant to schedule a reservation for you by calling the restaurant for you and talking to someone there with a human-like voice, or if it'll be an add-on to call screening. One other note, Steven indicated that it is a possibility that this won't be available in full on launch, which is similar to what happened with Duplex, and I think this is possible as well. P.S. Steven, you're crushing it. Good job. And Steven again also pointed out that there may be a form of Google Card with the launch of the Pixel 4. How exactly it materialized is uncertain as it could be similar to the Google Wallet card from years ago, like this guy, or something more like Apple Pay. Now it was found in the Android 10 code that the power menu will include a feature called cards and passes or quick wallet access, where you can store credit, debit cards, flight passes, and potentially more to be used for NFC payments and I imagine QR codes. This is super awesome and I love it. And we also have a bit more more of an idea of where we will see the project solely or motion sense available around the world. Best Buy had a landing page up that was teasing the Google Pixel 4 and where the motion sense will be available. That has since been removed, but it did state the following. And I quote, not functional in Japan, 
motion sense functional in the U.S., Canada, Singapore, Australia, Taiwan, and most European countries. Not all phone features are controlled by motion sense. Now, I imagine that the limitations are regulatory in nature, and that Google wishes that it could be available in more locations. It may be a matter of patience for those in unsupported countries. So, don't blame Google here for this. There's literally no reason why they'd want to withhold this feature from everyone. Anyways, we have a lot more to talk about motion sense in just a moment. As for the price, we still don't have any information on what it will be. But not too long ago, Sundar Pichai acknowledged that they're not really doing too well in the premium flagship tier. However, they're doing really great with the Pixel 3a, and that's probably because of its great delight to dollar ratio. And I talk about all of that in a video up here. I think it's to Google's benefit to keep the prices lower than Apple or Samsung. My hope is that they do not go above the price of the Pixel 3 or 3 XL. On launch last year, it was $800 and $900 respectively. Now, if Google were to set the XL to start at $800, I think people would run around in the streets. So, you know, Google, don't disappoint us. By the way, Max Weinbeck, notorious Samsung leaker, even thinks the $800 and $900 price points make sense. Now, for what people haven't noticed so far, First, while it was rumored quite a bit earlier in the year, I don't think an in-display fingerprint reader is happening. From all the leaks we have seen so far, we have seen zero indication of a fingerprint reader. Typically, you see a fingerprint icon on the screen to show this. Instead, we see a simple lock for when it's locked or unlocked, likely using a facial recognition, and a swipe up option. That's it. And personally, I don't want the curtain generation of fingerprint readers. They're frustratingly slow and fickle. Second, the wallpapers we're seeing are quite interesting, and I can't help but wonder if they have a meaning related to motion sense for future gestures that we'll see. Much like a conductor of an orchestra, different motions signal different things, and that may be the case for the Pixel 4 later on with motion sense. And uh, speaking of motion sense, here are the remaining Pixel 4 exclusives. First, we'll show the remaining photos and then the video. And here we have another look at the side and some of the bevel of the screen. You can see a bit more in the top corner over here. And here's a closer look at the buttons and the bezel. The buttons and the edges seem to be a matte finish rather than glossy or slick. When I asked my source what the outside frame felt like, they said it was similar to that of the Pixel 2 XL. And if you're not familiar with what the Pixel 2 XL feels like, it's not like an iPhone or a Galaxy device where it's cold, metal, and glass. It strangely feels a bit like a premium plastic that is on top of metal. But I'm not really entirely sure how else to describe it, so if you've had a Pixel 2 XL or you have one, let us uh, know what that's kind of like in the comments. And here's another shot of the bottom bezel as well as a good look at the screen and how it slightly curves into that glossy looking border or ring around the screen before the frame. And then a nice good look at the top bezel, which Google showed off in a blog post already. We can see on the left and right side that there's a little bit of a bluish tint to the top where the face unlock IR cameras are housed. There is a front facing camera, which I still believe and have heard rumors stating that this is actually a wide angle camera that crops in for normal shots. Then there's an ambient light or proximity sensor the speaker, the face unlock dot projector, and the flood illuminator. Now here's my favorite part, exclusive videos showing the motion sense settings menu. In this video, we see the overall settings menu where you can turn on and off the motion sense feature. It then breaks up the current features into quick gestures and ambient display. Quick gestures show the ability to skip songs and silence interruptions. Under ambient display, you can show items on the display when nearby and reach to check the phone. So let's check out the specific settings for those features. For skipping songs, you simply swipe left or write to the next or previous song. This honestly seems to make a lot of sense if your phone is laying on your desk and you just wave at it with this gesture. You can also choose a swipe direction to indicate what will advance to the next song. By the way, if the tech box skipped to this part only, there's a ton of other exclusive pictures and information throughout the other parts of this video. So don't miss out on that and check out this video from the beginning and subscribe because more leaks are coming. Next is silence interruptions. You can simply snooze an alarm or a call by waving past the phone or swatting at it like a, like a cat. <laughs> Next is reach to check phone. This allows you to have your phone on a table and you can just hover your hand over the phone and it'll essentially display your lock screen. You can check the time, notifications, and other information. It's kind of like always on display, but on demand display. Now you may be wondering, how do I prevent other people from messing with my phone when I'm not around? How do I stop them from using the reach to check phone when I'm not around and have this feature on? Now, I don't know for sure, but I imagine it has to do with the face unlock feature and how Google has claimed that it can recognize your face even if it's laying on a table. I'm 
I, your, your phone that is, not your face. If this is indeed the case, this is an extremely practical and a great implementation. I also imagine that there will be way more features coming in Motion Sense over the release of the Pixel 4, as these gestures are kind of the low-hanging fruit of Project Soli and what it can do. If you didn't know, Project Soli can recognize the composition of the items in front of it, like how many cards in the deck of cards, or whether it's your arm, a leg, or an, even an orange. If you want to learn more about the power and the ability of Project Soli, I made a video about that up here in the card or a link in the description. My source also told me that there's a new project that Google is working on that is supposed to come out when the Pixel 4 comes out. I wasn't able to get specifics on what that project is and if it's similar to the Google Assistant hold feature or something completely different. My sources said that Google is trying to do a lot right now, which makes it seem like Google is really trying to go for it this year and for the years to come. Now, I'm still in contact with my source and I've already asked a bunch of questions already, but if you have more questions yourself that you want me to ask my source, go ahead and leave some comments down below and we'll find out if we can get some answers. And let me know what you think of Motion Sense so far by leaving a comment down below and joining the This Is Tech Today community Discord chat server. There's a link down below in the description along with a link to this video sponsor, Honey. Please check them out to help support more videos and links. It's free and you get free money. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for watching This Is Tech Today, where we talk about the intersection of technology in our everyday lives, in business, and in all things creative. Until next time.